Hey guys, welcome back to another Elite Dangerous video. In today's video, I'll be going over the things you'll need to know as a new commander. I know what you're probably thinking. How the hell do I play this game? I know the feeling because I was a new commander at 1.2. I know the game can feel, well, a bit difficult at first, but things get easier, I promise. In this guide, I'll be highlighting everything you'll need to know to get started. When you first start the game, you'll be given two options for your starting ship. The Allrounder Sidewinder, which is the basic beginner ship in the game, and the Horizons DLC Sidewinder, that comes with an SRV. Once you pick one, you can continue to the screens to set up your commander as seen here. Once you've done that, you'll be able to pick from these three places to start. The first system is LHS 3447 at Trevithick Dock. This is the classic starter system of Elite Dangerous and most of the original players of the game started here. The next option will be in Dromi at Moss and Dock. This system is part of a Pilots Federation controlled district that only brand new commanders can access. The devs put this feature in the game in an attempt to stop griefing of new pilots, but I'll be getting into that a bit later on. Finally, the third DLC option, and personally where I started the game, is in Acellus Primus at Baker's Prospect. Your Sidewinder will have an SRV bay with this option, so you can begin enjoying the features of Horizons as soon as you start. Before you start playing, run the training simulations. These can be accessed on your status or right panel, and will help you to better understand docking procedure, maneuvering your ship, and general gameplay aspects. I won't be going over maneuvering and docking because the tutorial does a perfect job at explaining them. Remember, you can always change your controls to your liking. Now I know what you're probably thinking. How do I make money and get better ships? Well, I'll tell you how. Don't get discouraged, but you won't be able to make a lot of money quickly at first. In fact, I would honestly say that the first 1 million is the hardest. You're going to have to make small amounts of money at a time doing small missions. The missions I would recommend you start with would be things like courier jobs and boom time data deliveries. Essentially, any type of data transfer mission will be your best bet in the beginning, at least until you can get your cargo racks and frameship drive upgraded. Also, don't worry about completely upgrading the Sidewinder. You're going to be selling it and getting a new ship shortly anyway. If you can't get an A-rated module, don't get a B-rated one. B-rated modules are very heavy and will more than likely cause your ship to heat up a lot more than it would otherwise. Instead, get a D-rated module. They are the lightest modules, so you will get a small upgrade and it will also increase your ship's speed slightly. Now, as I said before, people grief in this game, and it's bad. They will kill new commanders like you, mining and exploration ships that have no defenses, and any ship that is alone, really. They are ruthless. They'll get into wings of four, hunt you down, chase you, and literally will not let you get away. Even if you manage to jump to another system, they'll just follow you and interdict you again. For this reason, I just cannot recommend open play. As I said before, the Pilots Federation District was just an attempt to solve this problem, but it doesn't really fix it. The crime and punishment system is just not harsh enough on them, and they can easily get away with killing helpless commanders. It's sad, but it is the truth. If you're having a lot of trouble trying to start out and getting your first bit of money, you can go to the Elite Dangerous subreddits and ask for other commanders to help you. You would honestly be surprised how many other experienced commanders are willing to help new commanders. I play on Xbox One, and in fact, I see so many looking for group posts saying that they are willing to help brand new commanders. All you have to do is ask. Experienced commanders such as myself understand the struggle that you have to go through when you first start the game, so we are more than willing to help you. Whenever you get a new ship, and just in general, you should always have your priorities set. A good rule of thumb would be to have your core internals, which includes your thrusters, power distributor, life support, sensor, and frameship drive on one. Anything shields related, such as your shield generator, shield boosters, and shield saw bank should be on two. Weapons should be on three. Unnecessary modules such as heat sinks, SRV bays, fighter hangers, etc. should be on four. And the cargo hatch should be on five. Here's what happens if you accidentally forget to set your priorities like a dumbass in the launch because you didn't notice your life support was offline.
Yeah. Big yikes. Now we all know the Sidewinder is pretty dang useless, so you're gonna need a new ship. Here's some great options to pick from once you've saved up enough money. The Hauler. While it is the cheapest of these three at around 1.2 million credit, it's also pretty useless besides jumping. It is great, however, if you want to start doing some short-range exploration around the bubble. Exploration can also be incredibly profitable if you scan enough high-value bodies. There is a tool called Road to Riches created by Commander Victic that allows you to set routes of very high-value systems to go scan and help you make money quickly, hence the name. I'll put a link to his tool in the description box below. I'll also highlight some basics of exploration later on in this video. So while it's pretty much useless for everything else, it can help you start making money very quickly towards something much better. The Adder. This ship will set you back around 1.9 million credits, and is a great multi-role starter ship. You can do quite a lot in this ship, although I would recommend mostly data and cargo runs. You can have up to 22 tons of cargo in this ship with the largest shield generator equipped, making it a great ship to do cargo and data runs in. The Viper Mark III. This ship will set you back 2.5 million credits, making it the most expensive of these three. However, this is a great combat starter. Combat can be risky though, as you can die fairly easily in this ship. I would recommend this ship only if you have another commander helping you start out. Note, these prices are only an estimate. You should probably save up a bit more than what I say here before you buy one of these ships. Never fly without a rebuy. It is the absolute golden rule of Elite Dangerous. If you don't have enough money to rebuy your ship at least once, don't buy it. If you lose your ship, you won't be able to get it back. And there goes all of the hard work you just put in to get it. The 7 second rule. This rule is essentially a rule to help you never pass the starport while you are super cruising towards it. What you'll want to do is keep your throttle in the blue and the time to arrival at 7 seconds. It will be below the distance in light seconds you are away from the station. When you do this, the ship will automatically slow down so you'll never accidentally fly past the starport. It's kind of an unwritten rule of Elite Dangerous, even some experienced commanders forget about it occasionally. Mining is quite simple. Here is everything you'll need to have on your ship. Also, you'll need to fill more than half of your cargo with limpets. This is done by selecting starport services, then advanced maintenance, then restock, and then scrolling down to limpets and selecting how many you want to buy. After you have all of these things on your ship and you've purchased your limpets, you're ready to go. Although AI miners tend to go to resource extraction sites, I would highly recommend just dropping into a ring at some random location. There will usually be one or two pirates which will scan you only to find that you don't have anything, then they'll leave you alone and probably leave. Personally, the way I would set up my fire groups would be to have the pulse wave analyzer and prospector limpet on fire group 1, and the collector limpet and mining lasers on fire group 2. This is just my preferred way of setting this up. You don't have to do it this way, I just find it the most efficient. To begin my Mining, the first thing you're going to want to do is to use the pulse wave analyzer to find asteroids with high material content. These asteroids will typically show up bright yellow when you use the scanner. The next step is to fire a prospecting limpet at the asteroids that light up. Make sure you are looking directly at the asteroid because the limpets fire in a straight line in front of your ship. When you lock on to the prospector limpet, it will give you information about the asteroid. It will tell you the concentration of material within, which can either be low, medium, or high, the percentage amount of each material material within and if it has a core or not, which I'll highlight in another video all about the new mining tools. Once you find an asteroid with a valuable material like painite, gold, or low temperature diamonds, you'll simply get close to the asteroid, because the mining lasers don't have very much range, and start firing them. Your ship will notify you once the asteroid is depleted. This is also the time you'll want to deploy your collector limpets and cargo hatch so the limpets can pick up mining fragments and bring them to your ship. Once your refinery has enough fragments, it will produce one ton of the material in question. That's it for basic mining. Exploration is one of the things that fascinated me when I started this game. I loved the idea of being able to literally go anywhere in the Milky Way galaxy. However, you won't be able to go anywhere without some special equipment. So here's some things you'll need for basic short distance exploration. The most important thing of all of these things is the fuel scoop, because when you are going anywhere in the galaxy, you're going to need a way to replenish the fuel you are using to make each jump. To 
To use a fuel scoop, you'll have to get very close to and orbit a main sequence star. This is also why exploration ships are made to be incredibly heat efficient. You'll be able to see the exclusion zone characterized by a thin yellow line going around the star. Do not fly into the exclusion zone. You'll be dropped out of supercruise and will probably overheat your ship while trying to escape. This is why exploration ships should always have heat sinks in case of an emergency. This is such a simple concept that I had noticed so many new players have trouble with. So here's an entire clip showing you how to do this with step-by-step -step instructions. First, you'll need to open the galaxy map. Then, you'll need to tab over to the fourth tab that shows a group of stars. Then, go down and switch modes from realistic to map. From there, go down to the first drop-down box and select star class. Now, deselect all star types below M-type star. At the bottom of the stars, there will be an option to apply filter to route. Make sure this box is selected. Also, on the route tab, which is the second tab, make sure the fastest routes is selected. Ignore use jet cone boost for now, leave it off. Recently, the game was updated to completely overhaul the way the discovery scanner and detailed surface scanner DSS, work. There's also a new mode called full spectrum scanner FSS, which allows you to scan all bodies in the system without actually traveling to them, which is how it used to be. You'll be able to discover basic information about the body by simply scanning it in FSS. If you want to search the body for biological and geological signal sources, you'll have to travel to the body to map it. The FSS works by you looking around for signals, which will glow blue as seen here. Once you are looking directly at a signal, you'll then need to fine tune the signal bar at the bottom of the screen to adaptive zoom to the body. Once you have successfully adaptive zoom to the body, it will be discovered, or just scan if it has already been discovered. I know what you're probably wondering. How can you tell if a body has been discovered or mapped yet? It's very easy. While you're zoomed into the planet, it will say at the bottom of the screen, first discover by and first map by if they have been discovered and mapped. If they haven't, one or both of these will not be here. To map a planet is quite simple. First, you'll need to travel to the planet. Once you get close enough, open the DSS. If you've reached the efficiency target, you'll be rewarded a bonus in credits for scanning the body. It's also a great indicator of how many probes you'll need. My general rule of thumb is to shoot one directly in the center of the planet, one directly behind it, and one on each side. When the little dash is in the center of the circle, the probe will go directly on the side of the planet. With larger planets, this won't be enough to fully scan the planet, however. This is mostly just judgment though, just aim the probes for parts of the planet that aren't fully scanned. That's it for basic exploration. Combat is probably one of the most fun things to do in this game and it's endlessly entertaining to destroy stuff. However, there isn't really that much to introduce here. Combat is something you kind of just have to learn and you'll get better with practice. What I would recommend starting out with is to use gimbal weapons because they have a small degree of tracking. They will stay on target within a certain angle so you won't have to be directly looking at them to hit them. The only real downside to these is that they are affected by chaff, which distorts turreted and gimbal weapons ability to track. Other than that, they are fine to use and very useful for new players that may not be able to aim fixed weapons very well. Chaff is also something I would highly recommend you use while you are still in a small vulnerable ship. Most ships will run gimbaled and turreted weapons, so you can take advantage of having chaff yourself. As for outfitting the rest of the ship, you'll want to have all A-rated core internal modules except for the life support which can be D-rated without any trouble. This clip is of bounty hunting in a vulture. Bounty hunting is essentially tracking down and killing space pirates. Usually you'll find pirates in resource extraction sites, which are bounty hunters' favorite places. You may be wondering, how do I know if they're pirates? Easy. When you scan their ship, it'll show them as wanted. That's how you'll know they have a bounty. That's about it for basic combat. There are many other forms of combat in this game, but bounty hunting is one of the easiest. I'll link starter builds for the Viper Mark III, Hauler, and Adder in the description. I'll see you next time.